So, thank you very much, Michael, for a very interesting presentation. We'll now hear from Dr. Ari Ackerman and his uh, talk from the Schechter Institute, and his talk will be on Hartman on the Jewish people as an interpretive community, implications for Jewish education. We're now talking of a modern Jewish thinker who has adopted for himself, as it were, the rabbinic mode in describing his own idea of commentary and interpretation. Thank you, Johnny. Um, I thought, in as much as the, the conference is dedicated to the relationship between orality and textuality, I would begin by citing the, the landmark essay of Chaim Salvechik, Rupture and Re Reconstruction. Um, Salvechik, um, his topic is uh, the transformation of contemporary orthodoxy and questions about the, the role of law within contemporary orthodoxy. And he wants to explain the shifts in halachic practice um, among Orthodox Jews by the shift from a more mimetic, organic approach, which is rooted in um, family traditions, communal practices, and that's the way law is transmitted, to a more textual community, in where the law is, um, is as it is embodied in the particular text, and, and the transmission is more the transmission of a text. Now this foundational insight is very important for, for understanding law, but I think it's also important for understanding education, and I think um, you could look at education through this prism that modern Jewish education has become much more textual. That previously, in, in pre-modern traditional society, even though there was formal institutions where the text was at its center, I would say the most important educational work was done within the context of the family and the community. Here I'm talking about education as the transmission of, of, of values and, and practices, and it was done in a, a mimetic, organic um, manner, and that's kind of been abandoned or become less relevant within the modern context, and modern Jewish education has become more textual, and that's also orthodox education, and also I would say secular cultural education. Um, this is certainly true for the way David Hartman understands education, and that's going to be the topic of my talk. Now, Hartman grounds his educational vision in the foundational pr principle of progressive education, which links the content and practice of education to the lives and concerns of the students. Thus, Hartman cites John Dewey regarding the need for Jewish education to assimilate that learning must be rooted in life. But Dewey viewed the textual orientation of conventional education as part of the problem which progressive education must remedy. Hartman, however, fuses his progressive approach with the textual emphasis of traditional Jewish education. This is an important point to underscore. In other words, for Dewey, Hartman has this progressive sensibility, but he's very different than Dewey in the sense that he believes that Jewish education can and should be um, te um, textually oriented and that this textual orientation can actually serve the goals of progressive education and education can be rooted in the experience of students. Consequently, he arrives at the following goal for contemporary Jewish education, fostering a deep attachment between the student and the foundational text of Judaism by relating to the text to the experience of the student and bringing about a dialogue between the students and the Jewish canon. Crucial to this educational reorientation is hermeneutics. Indeed, one can argue that Hartman views Jewish education as chiefly a hermeneutical enterprise. He therefore advocates an educational framework where students are allowed and even encouraged to debate the sacred, the sacred texts of the tradition, entering into a conversation with them and interpreting them in an innovative and creative fashion. For Hartman, the student must then be granted considerable exegetical latitude. They must sense that they are sanctioned to interpret the text freely. And I'll uh, quote Hartman in this regard. The empowerment of people to take part in the discussion, to feel intellectually free to become engaged and argue with a tradition, must take precedence over issues of authority and obedience if Jewish education is to renew the discussion that has defined Judaism for the past 2,000 years. 
end of quote. That is, exegesis provides a foundation whereby Jewish education can provide a means of creating commitment without sacrificing the core value of autonomy, which modern Jews value dearly. Hartman does recognize the danger of an educational approach where the fostering of a sense of interpretive freedom can compromise efforts to cultivate a sense of reverence toward the tradition and viewing its canonical text as sacred. Nevertheless, this non-authoritarian and non-hierarchical approach, argues Hartman, must be adopted for it represents the only means of generating interest and dedication among Jews who lack belief in the revealed origins of the text. As Hartman declares, if you cannot disagree with what you read or engage a text critically because of its sanctity and authority, then ultimately you will ignore and disregard it. Thus Jews will experience both a sense of empowerment and a feeling of connection by interpreting the text without demanding assent to a particular belief and dogma or acceptance of specific ritual practices. Having placed the free engagement of the text as the central goal of Jewish education, Hartman argues for the relevance of traditional Talmudic study for achieving this end. In other words, this, on the one hand, in terms of his goals, there's something very um, innovative and I would say modern in terms of autonomy and creative, but he then tries to fuse it with the traditional practice of Talmudic study. At least that, that's how he begins with. Um, he characterizes the rabbinic tradition as rife with debate and disagreement, with scholars of each generation providing diverse approaches to almost every halakhic question. Through bold and interpretive inter through bold and innovative interpretive gestures, the rabbis become masters of the text and partners with God in the further development and shaping of the halachic tradition. Hartman then desires to recreate the give and take of rabbinic scholars in contemporary Jewish education by inviting students into the interpretive community whose members include the esteemed sages of each generation. And I'll, we'll, I'll, I want to focus um, shortly on this conception of the interpretive community, which is central to Hartman's approach. As he notes, we encourage the students to actively join in the discussion of the Tanaim and Amoraim. They, there were numerous occasions, and here he's talking about the school that he founded in Montreal, there were numerous occasions when the students argued and took issues with the views of Abaye and Rabba. The Talmudic text that they glued into their scrapbooks included the comments of Billy and Rivka alongside those of the Talmudic sages. Um, here, Hartman here concretizes the, the participation of the student in the interpretive community by symbolically erasing the closure of the canonical text. In other words, the student builds a new text which opens the canon. Put differently, the sacred text becomes literally and figuratively open-ended, and students are encouraged to contribute therein. Indeed, Hartman identifies the Torah Shabbat Peh as an ongoing dialogue centered on the Torah Shabbat in which the Torah is expanded through human creativity. <coughs> Thus, he reasons that the interpretations of students constitute an additional layer to the Torah that appropriates divine revelation for a particular Jewish community, and Jewish education should be concerned with empowering students so that they can produce these herme hermeneutical innovations. Having examined his vision for reforming Jewish education, it is apparent that Hartman's educational philosophy grapples with the delicate balance between unity and diversity. Thus, despite the deep, deep dif differences between the outlooks and lifestyles of different segments of the Jewish people, one can speak of elements of Jewish education that transcend these differences and offer a collective ground for solidarity. Jews should study and interpret similar texts and share certain core values. In other words, Hartman here is 
dealing with one of the most, one of the core issues of, of modern Jewish thought and modern Judaism in general. That in pre-modern Judaism, we have a particular shared language grounded in a commitment to halacha. This, this shared, as a result of the emancipation and the enlightenment, this shared language is no longer the collective discourse of the Jewish people. And we have to find, or at least according to a certain group of thinkers and streams of Judaism, we have to find a new collective language that can replace halacha. And obviously there, there's debates. And for Hartman, it's, it's not just the text, it's the shared interpretation of the text which becomes um, a, a new um, shared language for the Jewish people. By supplying a core curriculum that can be accepted jointly by all Jews, it will allow for some sense of shared destiny, values, and culture that will envelop the Jewish people as a whole. The shared language that is acquired through Jewish education also provide, is, provides the necessary framework for dialogue and communication between Jews of different theological and ideological commitments. Without this shared language, Hartman maintains, the Jewish people are destined to fragment into sex devoid of any substantial binding elements and feelings of solidarity. But on the other hand, in other words, Hartman isn't just interested in unity, he's also interested in diversity. Hartman's vision of Jewish education is animated by a need to foster pluralism within the Jewish community. While arguing for the importance of its collective features, he argues that Jewish education must also provide space for difference and disagreement. The Jewish community must educate towards respect for diversity. Thus, while ensuring solidarity among Jews and the acquisition of a shared language among its students, Jewish education must allow these students to articulate in their common language divergent beliefs, ideals, and behavioral patterns. Hartman's commitment to unity and diversity in Jewish society relates to his understanding of the relationship between community and individual autonomy, which are his two core values of his Jewish philosophy as a whole. Hartman on the one hand, Hartman decries the overemphasis on personal religious existentialism at the expense of community. He views Judaism as a communal religion and conceived human being from a communitarian perspective as rooted in community and tradition. Yet Hartman also valorizes individual autonomy and rejects an authoritarian approach to Judaism. However, in order to maintain a balance between unity and diversity, as well as between community and autonomy, Hartman adopts a relational understanding of autonomy. He envisions human autonomy being developed within the framework of a particular community and in dialogue with a specific tradition. In analyzing Hartman's educational vision, it is helpful to assess the lines of continuity and the elements of innovation in regard to edu the educational approach that Hartman is advocating. To a certain degree, Hartman's approach has its roots in the yeshiva method of learning, particular as, particularly as developed in the 19th century Lithuanian yeshivot. Hartman himself notes that his attempt to create a timeless dialogue between members of the interpretive community continues what he himself experienced as a yeshiva student. Like Hartman, the yeshiva embraces a critical and creative approach to the text. In the Volozhin yeshiva and other similar yeshivot, the student was empowered and charged to create chidushim, and the study of Torah was divorced from the practice of the Torah. However, while basing himself on the one hand on the precedent of, of the rabbis and the yeshivot, there's also innovative elements in his approach. And I should also under, underscore the practical dimension of Hartman's entire discussion. Hartman is writing these essays on Jewish education in the 70s and the 80s at the same time that he is developing probably the first alternative Beit Midrash in Jerusalem, which will be the, the founding institution of a whole movement. Um, and I don't have time to, to outline all the specific features of, of, of this new educational institution, which on the one hand draws its roots from, from Rosenzweig and Buber, but also um, has an Israeli context. 
and his educational vision in terms of autonomy, non-hierarchical approaches, and what I'll talk about now in terms of the members of the interpretive community, is implemented within this specific educational framework. One important innovation of Hartman's position with great practical relevance is Hartman's inclusion of women in the interpretive community. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thereby allowing women to participate in Talmudic study and interpretation in a fully egalitarian, egalitarian manner. However, Hartman's innovative understanding of membership in the, inter in the interpretive community relates not only to women, there are also two other members. Um, the non-scholar and the non-observing Jew. Previously in traditional society, um, only, rabbinical, only rabbinic scholars who had gained proficiency in their, and expertise in the understanding and interpretation of can canonical text was allowed to interpret um, text. Um, only his exegesis, both Talmudic, Halachic, and Agadic, was considered as constituting oral law. Thus, in traditional Jewish society, only the pinnacle of Jewish education was student believed to be capable of providing his own interpretation to the traditional text. Um, and I'll, I'll diverge a little from my text because of my time constraints. Um, and, and this is in true, this is, in other words, in, in traditional yeshivot, and also in, in, in cult, secular cultural Jewish education, um, you learn text as a preparatory um, exercise to gain proficiency, and only if you become an expert, then you're allowed to be actively create a new level um, of the text, either in terms of Torah or in terms of Jewish culture. Now what Hartman is doing is allowing um, the text become central, not only to um, educate the student so that he gains the skill at a later stage, he'd become a member of the interpretive community, but already at the initial stage, he or she is a member of the interpretive community. Um, and here you have, uh, I think, uh, an interesting comparison with Dewey. Um, we could draw an analogy between John Dewey and Hartman. Hartman. Dewey's educational philosophy was rooted in the observation <laughs> that education should not be concerned with preparing the student for a future life, but is a process of living. In a similar manner, Hartman claims that Jewish education should not involve itself in preparing the student for interpreting the tradition, but Jewish education is interpretation itself. In other words, the student already becomes a member of the interpretive community, and his and her, or her interpretations are legitimate and, and authoritative. And the practice that I, that, that I quoted about Hartman, that their students, the comments of the students were actually incorporated um, in, their, in their books and they were um, alongside, Billy and, and Rivka were alongside Abai and Rava, I think concretizes this approach. But he also adds another person to the interpretative community and that is Jews who were unwilling to take upon themselves religious beliefs or halachic demands. Previously, the study of the Bible and Talmud was an expression of a covenantal commitment, an embodiment of the belief that these texts were sacred and authoritative. By contrast, Hartman views the study of the traditional Jewish canon as expressing a commitment to the Jewish people and their continuous dialogue surrounding these texts. Hence, for Hartman, the only criterion for interpreting the tradition is engagement with the, traditional, with the textual tradition something inherent in the exegetical act itself. Hartman undergirds this redefinition of eligi eligibility for participation in the, in, in the interpretive community with a textually centric conception of the nature of Judaism. I'm going to quote what I think one of the most interesting lines yes. in Hartman's philosophy. Yes. This is my last paragraph. Okay. Judaism is not only a religion in the ordinary sense a faith system, a body of beliefs and practices, but also, and today most important, an ongoing discussion of a committed interpretive community. That is, for Hartman, the practice of Judaism is at base a diachronic and synchronic dialogue where the conversation takes place through textual exegesis. 
The participants are committed to the interpretive community, but not necessarily to the beliefs and practices mandated by the texts themselves. Hartman obviously envisions Judaism as also embodying a way of life that entails practices and beliefs, but he aversed that Judaism can pr be practiced in a more minimalistic fashion through participation in the interpretive community. Thus, on a certain level, Judaism is a cultural la language and not a set of religious norms. And I'll, I'll end with that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, I think we've had uh, a very rich morning, and I think a lot of uh, fruit and grist for the mill.